with approach means we're gonna take the indirect permission model. So mass adaptation from device space. So as usual, this is my portfolio. So I own the RKM assets of the Bitcoin and all the RKM which is related to these six categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my portfolio strategy, please check out my other video about my portfolio strategy. And here's the video link. Okay. And today's Teller matching category is here. Number three, token collateral's DeFi, especially stable coin market, which is one of the critical industry layer for the blockchain. Now as usual, I'm gonna apply the six analytical points to so start with the pain points products, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 point here, so the total score is 30 point, 30. And if you want a deeper understanding about how I'm gonna analyze each point here, please check out my other video about my altcoin investment strategy. And here is my video link, okay? Then let's start on the number one, pain point analysis. And here's pain point. We need global stable coin in post USD era. Let me tell you the background here. Currently, we are under very critical moment about the future sustainability of the world economy. Because currently, US dollar economy is the largest economy in the global, but it has been taken ear that, you know, US dollar economy is going down. Especially, corona shock is accelerating post USD era. Think about highest possibility scenario, but who's gonna take over the past USD, in my analysis, it's crypto economy. So that is why here's a critical market demands that we need to build a stable coin ecosystem, which can replace current key major currency, US dollar, okay? Here's critical historical facts. I want you to understand here, especially to deeply grasp the definitions and the critical needs about a stable coin market. It's this one. A key currency transition from UK pound to US dollar causes world depression and World War II. So most people don't know about this history, but once we're gonna look at the past global economy leadership in the past, almost 100 years ago, we're gonna experience critical historical transitions from UK pound to the US dollar for the key currency ecosystem. So currently, as you can see here, that US dollar is a dominant player in the clean currency market. So blue one is USD, orange one is Euro, and the yellow one is JPY, blue one is UK pound, and the gray one is Chinese renminbi. This data from IMF, and then they're gonna summarize the data from 2009, 2015, and 2019. So once we can look at the latest stats here, it's crystal clear that US dollar is a dominant key currency in the global economy over 60%, three times larger than second player Euro, who's gonna take 20% of the total market share. Then 100 years ago, this blue one was UK pound, okay? Usually, these kind of key currency tradition moments, we're gonna experience this huge economic turmoil. That turmoil eventually caused wild depressions in 1929. Because of these wild depressions, we're gonna experience this World War II. In World War II, we lost 85 million people in a global basis. So that is why we must avoid such economic turmoil and tragedy because of these key currency transition moments. Then currently, there is no alternative way for us except blockchain industry can develop much more sustainable key currency ecosystem in this global economy. That is why Stable coin market is pretty critical. Then what I'm thinking about is blockchain based stable coin plays a pretty critical role for soft landing of post US dollar era. Because while deflation, World War II is completely hard landing, not the soft landing. What we need is a soft landing solutions. And the blockchain based stable coin play this role. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay? Based on this understanding, let's move to the next topic, product analysis. Then before I move into the detail stuff, let's check out the history overview of the teller. So in January 2018, 
Duke Wine and Daniel Shim founded Terraform Labs, sponsored by Timon. Timon is a Groupon in South Korea. Okay? And in April 2019, they launched their mainnet. Then Terra Protocol runs on Tinami on the customer's help, which means Terra Protocol has their own blockchain. They're not going to run in their blockchain on Ethereum platform or any other box. Okay? And the next, Runa is a token used in the insurance of the stable coin. Terra SDR contract stuff, it's a smart contract. With a price stability mechanism, as well as for the staking and the governance token. In order to stable the value of the Terra SDRs, user can redeem Runa tokens in exchange for Terra SDRs and vice versa. And here is the system overview of the Terra. And here is Terra public blockchain here. The consensus algorithm is DPoS, same as Cosmos have. And they are connected their blockchain to the Cosmos have here. So since they have own blockchain, so here is own validator network here. Then they're going to take the DPoS model, which means the normal retail investor can also join this mining network through the delegation of your token into the validator in this Terra protocol network. Okay? They're going to use the Lunar for the staking for the DPoS, also for the insurance collateralization of the stable coin. And one of the, you know, their uniqueness of the stable coin ecosystem is a soft tech stable coin platform but unlike Maker or they're going to issue each stable coin based on each fiat currency. Not only about the USD, but also Euro or Korean won, JPY. So this one is a product strategy here. Okay? Maker or die only focus on issue stable coin DAI, which is a soft pack stable coin for US dollar only. Okay? So this is a critical difference between Terra system and Maker DAO system. All right? Here is a major item, vertical proposal analysis. So here is a Luna and a MakerDAO DAI and Tesla USDT. And I know that you know, lots of you know, retail investors focus on these two items in a price stabilization mechanism, IMF SDR model or stability fund model. To me, there is no big difference. About stability fee model, which is applied by MakerDAO, they got an inspiration from the central banking system, you know, decentralized model. Then Luna, since they're the later player in this you know, stablecoin market, they try to take a different approach. Then they gotta apply IMS SDR model, which IMF applied to unstable stablecoin market, especially in the developing countries, because they don't have any kind of sustainable financial system, unlike in the developed countries, such as US, Japan, or Europe. Okay? To me, at this moment, these approach, there is no critical competency difference here. Okay? And the next one is you know, multi collateral stuff. Currently, only Lunar is a collateral assets to issue the stable coin. But Maker and I, you know, since they are also running an Ethereum platform, Maker and I can apply all the crypto assets which is active on Ethereum platform. So any other crypto assets like BAT tokens or NFT, which is also active on Ethereum platform, they can apply to here. Okay? About governance token model is also a critical difference here that Lunar, they're going to take in DPoS model, so it's an inflation model for their governance. But MakerDAO take the limited supply model here. Okay, so here's another difference. But thinking about the product strategy perspective to compete each other, to me, these three items will be the most critical elements that we have to deeply understand here. Because MakerDAO die for their mass adaptation strategy, starting from Ethereum DeFi project such as, you know, Compound, or Aave, or Uniswap, okay? Then Luna, since their major sponsor is Timo, like Groupon and South Korea, so they are thinking about more like a daily payment transaction stuff. Once we're going to compare the traditional level, MakerDAO, Ethereum, DeFi platform, it's much more advanced than Terra, Luna platform here, as of now. And then one more thing I want you to pay attention to here is no competition with CBDC, because MakerDAO, they're going to take the software pack model for only US dollar. They are planning to apply fiat currency, also cryptocurrency basket pricing mechanism in long term. In my analysis, MakerDAO die, they don't need to compete with CBDC. But Luna system, since they're going to take the stablecoin insurance mechanism for each fiat currency, in long term, this product approach they're going to replace CBDC system run by a central banking system, which also you should know in here. 
and about USDT Tether, they only take the hard pack model for the US dollar only. So think about the future possibility about stablecoin market here. I don't think Tether doesn't have any kind of potential here. Only temporary solutions until this type of decentralized stablecoin ecosystem, they're gonna lead to the mass adaptation in the market, okay? And here's kind of key things I want you to pay attention to is this one. So e-commerce focus or DeFi focus, which is much more high potential about stable coin mass adaptation in long term. Then here's my analysis. So here's the you know, MakerDAO Ethereum combination here. Then since they are focused on DeFi, that's why the current their major competitor and you know, existing industry player is those investment or commercial banking player such as JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs. For Lunar, it's a little bit different because they are mainly sponsored by Timon. Timon focused on e-commerce industry. That is why their major competitor is these player, such as Amazon and Alibaba. So simply say, which are much more powerful competitor? To me, these player, because their organization is still younger than these old fashioned player. And also their market cap is top 10 in a global stock market. And most importantly, they are pretty strong at the computer science technology, including distributed computer system stuff. So from this perspective, competing with these player is pretty tough. Every single startups usually have to avoid these direct competition model against tech giants. Instead, all the time we should take the slow and steady wins approach means we're going to take the indirect competition model. So mass adaptation from DeFi space for the stable coin ecosystem to open stuff, to me, it's much more structurally makes sense. And here's my clear future scenario about mass adaptation of the stable coin market. It's actually this one. So what I'm thinking right now is NFT DeFi or MakerDAO will be a killer solution for stable coin mass adaptation on e-commerce. Because currently, once we're going to look at the collateralized DeFi market for the stable coin like MakerDAO, they are starting from major crypto assets such as BAT or East token here. They're going to develop their business on a DeFi space such as Aave or Uniswap, liquidity mining or yield farming stuff, right? But since MakerDAO ecosystem also can apply NFT tokens, the NFT token is currently starting from game items, you know, virtual goods stuff, or digital art item stuff. But in long term, these NFT technology, it's 100% for sure that we can apply to the living items, such as your smartphones, or your clothes, or your houses, or your car. Okay? Then you can collateralize these NFT to borrow die for your daily life. So these collateralized NFT market, especially for the living item stuff, is a huge competitive edge to defeat existing e-commerce ecosystem like Amazon, Alibaba, and eBay. So a lot of lots of consumer move their major in buying or selling activity from the existing e-commerce platform to the decentralized e-commerce platform such as Origin Protocol. Okay? So that's exactly what I'm thinking about the mass adaptation of the stablecoin stuff. So from this perspective, Run ads, you know, product strategy stuff, it's a little bit questionable for me for the mass adaptations. Okay? Then here's an additional item. Help you understand about you know mass adaptation of the stablecoin market based on the chasm theory. The chasm theory is the most well advanced and uh, well established tech market theory for the mass adaptations. And uh, they mainly have five cues of this. Starting from innovator, audio after, chasm here, early majority, late majority, and late mass. And every single new technology experiences these directions for their mass adaptations. And then thinking about you know, stablecoin e-commerce adaptation stuff, NFT, especially game voucher goods or you know, data art stuff, their main customer target is here. Innovator and early after. Early majority, they don't have any interest for these you know, virtual goods stuff because these stuff is not related to their daily life. They don't use such items in their daily life. But once we're gonna start to apply this NFT prioritization model for your iPhone or for your cars or for housing stuff, they start using it. So just like this. So crowdwise NFT defined on living items 
which can bring more buying power for decentralized equals platform such as an origin protocol, then you know more stable coin demand for payment transaction stuff. That is why stable coin market can cross the chasm. That's the whole scenario currently what I'm thinking about mass adaptation of the stable coin market. Okay? And the next one, team analysis. So key member in the Terraform Labs, do founder and CEO, and he's ex-CEO and a founder at Anifti. And he got the BS of the computer science at the Stanford University. And the second guy, Nicholas, head of the research, co-founder of the Google Labs and a software engineer at the Lead IQ. And he got the master's degree of the computer science at the Stanford University. So both are pretty smart, you know, tech entrepreneur, which is great. And the third guy, Daniel, and he's also the co-founder, and he is the founder and the chairman at the Timo, major sponsor of the Runa project. And he's also the founder and the CEO at the Chai Corporations, which is just like an Alipay of the Timo platform. They initially have the plus 40 member, mainly in South Korea. Simply say, it's a pretty good team, okay? And then number four, execution power analysis. So here's the stable coin market active stats as of April 2021. And then I collected the data from Grassnails and CoinGecko here, and then conversion items, active address, transaction volume, and the total cyclist supply, USD based stuff. Our main focus for the comparison is Terra USD in DAI. But the, one of the things I want you to pay attention to here that since Terra take the multiple fiat currency approach, so except USD, they can acquire multiple fiat currency market for the stablecoin mass adaptations, such as you know Terra Korean won or Terra Euro or something. So that is why currently there is a critical you know, market share difference between DAI, only software USD to Terra USD. But in long term, Terra USD may be able to catch up. These stats it's pretty soon. Okay? Okay, number five, token economy analysis. So here's the token economy design matrix which I made. And a major matching category of the Terra project is here, DeFi. This is the network effect model of the RUNA, which I'm going to analyze. Then here's the starting point. So 0.1% to 1.0% margin fee for the e-commerce, cheaper than Visa model, 1.5% to 2.5% on average. Okay? Then, you know, they're going to get, you know, margin growth here. Then once they're going to successfully acquire the margin here, active user also grow. So gas demand will be increasing for process the payment transaction stuff. That is why more Luna DPoS staking demands which come to the market, since they're going to apply the DPoS model, they can acquire more potential Terra user here. Because you know, those DPoS model accelerate Terra user to collateralize their Luna assets to borrow Terra stablecoin. Okay? Which kind of bring their Terra stablecoin transaction growth. And here's another growth factor here is the Luna asset growth. Leveraging this fast growth mechanism, Payment fee reward for DPoS delegator and validator here, which can bring more payment fee reward for DPoS delegator and validator because these, you know, payment transaction fee, they're gonna apply the revenue share model with the DPoS taking model here. So that's why we can bring them the Luna scale supply for a crypto exchange leads to less price variety on the market. Then you know they can achieve more stable. As the value grows here, more and more user and the retail investor, they're going to join Luna DPoS staking demands here. These users will be the potential user for the Terra stablecoin market. That is why they can acquire more margin. And then for your reference, I also summarize network effect on the Ethereum plus you know, MKR here. And here is the starting point. DApps need both for product development in their early stages and with the DeFi to compete with tech giants. And then currently, as we know, Ethereum is a dominant player in the BAS market. So they can successfully attract a lot of lots of DApps players here on their ecosystem. That is why DApps growth itself brings us much more active users on the Ethereum platform. So those active user growth also brings more gas demands for the transaction processing stuff. So they can attract more Ethereum 2.0 POS staking demands in the market and that those you know, Ethereum staking user could be a potential user for the DAI payment stuff. This is the transaction growth of the Ethereum platform. Then make our DAI leveraging these you know, transaction growth, especially, especially DApps you know, margin growth because those you know, DApps itself will be the margin for the stablecoin DAI. Then currently their major DApps is a DeFi product but in the future, 
NFT on e-commerce for the daily payment transition step that I told you in the previous slide will come to the market please soon. So which can bring the starting point of the DAI payment transition growth. And the DAI adaptation is accelerating this need to sell into fiat currency for the you know, user's daily payment transition staff. So which can generate much more gas demands on the Ethereum platform. That is why more Ethereum 2.0 POS staking demand will come to the market. So that's why Ethereum can gain more active user on their platform and then those active users will be the potential user for the stablecoin die here, okay? So those two growth mechanisms correlate each other and help each other for the growth ecosystem stuff, okay? Once we're gonna compare these two network FF model, to me at this moment, ETH and MKR model is much more powerful because they're gonna take the indirect competition model against tech giants you know, existing payment infrastructure, especially e-commerce, okay? And then governance now. It's very critical because MakerDAO and Ethereum both are well developed in their DAO ecosystem as of now. So Terra has to catch up pretty soon. This is a pretty higher requirement to attract a lot of retail investor which is pay attention to the DAO ecosystem development stuff for the each blockchain project. Okay? And then number six, hype cycle analysis. So got the hype cycle analysis, blockchain technology 2020 versions. And a major matching category of the Terra is here, blockchain asset tokenizations. This market category will be going into the mature stage next to two to five years. You know, why I think this is a critical matching point for them? Because as I told you in the previous slide, NFT DeFi will be the critical growth driver for the mass adaptation of the stable coin. That's why, okay? And the total score. So about the pain point, without any questions, we need a decentralized stablecoin ecosystem to avoid hard landing of the post US dollar. Okay, so it's 5.0. About products, I think it's pretty well designed. But once we're gonna compare the MakerDAO DAI, you know, compatible with the Ethereum ecosystem stuff, Terra ecosystem need a killer solutions because MakerDAO had a killer solution on a DeFi. But about Terra platform, they don't have these killer solutions yet, so 4.0. About team, 4.5 because all founding member is pretty great serial tech entrepreneur. So without any questions, 4.5. It's pretty good. Execution power. I think not that bad. But still, as I told you that compared with, you know, MakerDAO, Ethereum ecosystem staff, they need to do with a certain level of effective cloud solutions. So 4.0 at this moment. Token economy. So compared with Ethereum, MakerDAO, network effect model, current their network effect model it's not that quite strong. I think that we need more, much more, you know, scalable and very powerful killer solutions on their starting point to acquire the matchup on the active user for the ecosystem dopamine stuff. So 3.5. Hype cycle 4.5. Blockchain asset tokenization has a huge potential and a pretty hot topic next to two to five years in blockchain space. That is why they can get much more strong momentum in the market. That is why they can gain these high momentum in the market, you know, next few years or so. So 4.5. So the total score is 25.5 points. So my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. From this perspective, I'm gonna recommend investment in Terra tokens, Luna. So that is all this time. So I'm gonna make this video for the educational purpose. So I'm not gonna guarantee you any kind of certain level investment outcome with this video or any other video that I make. But I truly hope that my video will practically help you guys understand about high potential about crypto and blockchain space. So I'm gonna make a lot of in this video on crypto and blockchain space. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.